Uh, my name is Kai Pinkerton. I'm the community pastor here at the Mount, uh, one of our elders as well, and, uh, and I just get the privilege of, of preaching today. Uh, we're in a series called Prophet, Priest, King, so we're going to dive into that here in just a second. Um, we will be in the book of Hebrews to start, so if you uh, found a Bible around you or brought yours, if you have one from uh, the Mount under the chair, it's on page 1003. You want to start turning there. Hebrews 4 is where we'll be. Uh, but prophet, priest, king. Ryan started this series last week and, and really kind of gave an intro to it as to what is this about, prophet, priest, king. And, and really the idea that, that, and the truth that Christ fully fulfills each of these roles. He's fully prophet, fully priest, fully king. And it's like, well, okay, well, what does that really mean? Well, our hope is to unpack that a little bit. Um, Ryan, um, he's, and in, in, in Ryan's, um, who he is, he's a high prophet, and a prophet is someone who proclaims the word of God, and we'll look at that again briefly. I'm more of the priest kind of role, where I'm more about the people, and connecting people to God, and one another, and, and this role, and then there's the king, and it has to do with more orderly stuff, and um, I'm not high in that, so I don't even know what it is. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, what, what, but Today we're going to dive into the priests a little bit more um, in just a second. But again, I wanted to back up. This is not just for understanding what Ryan, Kai, and how is this church ran. My heart is that this is really, this, we will better see Christ. We're more, more fully see who the Lord is. If he is fully prophet, if he is fully priest, if he's fully king, what does that mean for me in my relationship with him? How can I grow in that? Right, uh, we have uh, six kids. One of our daughters, uh, when she was four, uh, was on a soccer team. Uh, she was, I think, it was her first game. She was leaving the game, uh, you know. And if you imagine, if you ever had a kid play sports or their very first time, they were nervous. Are they going to cry? Are they going to sit down? Are they going to do anything? You know, uh, she was excited, nervous, and all that. Well, after the game, we're like, "Oh, you did so good!" And you know, trying to pump her up. And we asked her, "How was it? How do how, you like it?" You know, and, and this was her words. And I won't tell you who it was. So I'll protect her, so you don't embarrass her. Uh, her words were, "I knew I was going to be good." But I didn't know I was going to be that good. And we, we tease with her now, and it was awesome. And her soccer career didn't last all too long. But uh, she, she was great that day, and uh, in her mind she was. But my heart for us in looking at Prophet, Priest, King, and really Christ is that, man, like, hopefully if you're, if you're in Christ and you, you're, you're saved, you're, you have a relationship with God You've seen God for who he is, seen Jesus, his work on the cross and what he's done for you. And you're like, man, you are good. Like, I want that. I need that. You've had a moment where it's like, man, I see my sin. I'm broken. I'm separated. I need Jesus. And you said yes to that because like, I, you want, like, I need that. And Jesus is good. But as you walk longer in life and you go through highs of praising God and God, you know, blessing you with different things and the lows of just suffering and hardships and different things. As we journey through life, we see God and we see Jesus's faithfulness through it all. And we see him, even though he was great at salvation and better we could ever imagine, we see him even greater. Man, I knew you were good, but I didn't know you were this good. I didn't know your grace was this big. I didn't know your, your mercy was this amazing. Man, I, that's my hope is for this even series is that we will see Christ bigger, magnified more, more clearly in our lives, as well as the church too. Let me hit as a review real quick, Ryan hit it real quick, prophet, priest, king. So a prophet, who Christ was in that seat, as well as someone who may be, if you're in Christ, let me just back up, if you're in Christ, Christ is in you. And if he's fully prophet, priest, king, there's elements of that kind of fulfilling itself out. Jesus fulfilling himself out through you as prophet, priest, and king. Ryan is mostly prophet. He's also priest. You know, we, we have elements of all of that if you're in Christ in you. It's just a way we package it because it makes it, we can get it if we understand it this way. Well, a prophet is someone who maybe with authority and vision, um, message oriented. So it's, it's, it's about the word of God. It's about truth. It's about proclaiming that truth. It's message oriented. Um, think head. I'll explain that more in a second. Love to proclaim the word of God and dream about where God is leading the church. Create compelling vision. That's prophet. The next one is priest. 
It's about the presence of God and about people. People oriented. Maybe more of the heart. Make sure that everyone is cared for and feels God's love along the way. Create meaningful connections with God and with others. That's priest. King. King is about kind of control and the needing for order and plan. Someone who is is methods or task or maybe mission oriented. Okay, think, you know, hands. How how is this going to happen? It's going to get done. Love to put systems in place to make it happen. Create life-giving structure. I like the head, heart's hand. Um, that doesn't mean that, oh, well, Kai's a priest, so he's a heart. He doesn't have any head or hands. Or Ryan's head, he doesn't have any heart in him. Or what? No, like, if Christ is in us, Christ is 100% prophet, 100% priest, 100% king. He's in us. In us, it's not just third, third, third. And if, oh, I'm really high, like, caring for people and priestly, I'm probably two-thirds, and so I'm only a third this. I'm just trying to, if it helps you think 100%, 100%, 100%, think that way. Some of us are really high in one. Some of us are high in all of them. Some of us are high in a couple of them. The reason I say that is because it's not an excuse if I'm a low king for just to be like, well, well, I don't really have a plan today. That's not okay. Like I need to grow in that. I need to get stronger in that. I'm, I'm weak in that area to man, accomplish the Lord's task that he has for myself. So I need to surround me with people who are higher in that way as well as pray that the Lord would strengthen and raise me up in those ways. But he has wired us each uniquely and gifted us uniquely. And so there are, you may be, you may be more like a priest like me or more like a prophet or more like a king. The, the goal is that we see Christ more fully and that as we seek him, Christ becomes more fully known in us as well. John 14, 6. Uh, it's a great verse. Kind of ties these together a little bit. Uh, Jesus speaking to his disciples. I think it was Thomas was like, hey, how are we going to know the way like, to get to heaven, get to see Jesus, get to the, you know, at the end? It's Jesus said, hey, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Well, one could say that as king, he is the way. He's the means to get there. He's the method to get there, right? As priest, he's the life. Jump there. Um, He's what he's he brings Jesus. Jesus brings us to the Father, right? And that's where eternal life is had. And as prophet, he is the truth. Jesus is the truth. He is says that Jesus is the Word of God. He is encapsulates the Word. I say that. Because knowing Jesus fully from these, these three perspectives helps us know the Father fully. Okay, so it's a better picture. So that's as we, as we go into this. So the prophet, priest, king, the, the three perspectives, again, why? We want to see Jesus more completely, right? Uh, I had the chance just last two days, uh, we grabbed our family. It's like summer's ending. We haven't done much this summer. Let's go to the beach. <laughs> so we like drove to Galveston and spent a few hours and uh, had a quick little trip, but it was really great. But if you've ever been to the beach, picture yourself on a beach. You don't have to picture yourself in Galveston. You can picture a prettier one if you want. It's still the beach. Uh, but you're on the shoreline and you're just looking out on the ocean or the gulf, wherever. And you like look to the right, look to the left, and it's like, man, it goes on like and on. You look out over the water and eventually just ends. And you're like, is that the end of the earth? It just just drop you know like it's just it's just big and mighty and you're like wow god you're big and i'm just thinking like the ocean's big you know it's just like that's a perspective just standing there i'm not even in the water i can see it like i have this perspective of the ocean and the sea i'm playing with the kids we're in the water playing they're playing riding the waves and you know one of the kids gets hit by the wave and comes up like getting the salt water out they get hit again as they're trying to wipe their eyes and they're getting frustrated and mad. They get hit again and now they're crying and they get hit again and I'm trying to rescue them, you know, because the waves just keep coming. They're not going to take a break for you. And man, like they're just, it's, but it's powerful too. Like, man, I just think like the ocean, like when you're in it, like it's going to do its thing, right? And, and there's fish swimming around us. We had jellyfish stings and we had, I mean, it was just, there's creatures out there in the deep blue. I'm thinking, wow, there's all kinds of creatures and we couldn't say the shark word, that was a bad word. We deemed it a bad word for two days just so we didn't have any uh, issues out there. And so um, I, I say that, like, being in the water gave me a different perspective of this grand ocean. I don't know if you've ever flown over the ocean or the Gulf. It gives you even, you thought it was big, but you didn't know it was that big, right? And you're like over it and you're like, man, it goes on and on. Like, there's, it's big. Man, that's my heart for us today and, and days to come and years to come is that, man, that Christ would continually be bigger to us. 
We'd see him more completely, prophet, priest, king, as, as one way. Like, let's not just see him in this priestly role, which we'll talk about today, but we want to see him from the truth of God and his, his order and his systems and his methods for us to live our life on mission for him. So two implications, two applications for us is in the church that obviously as a church, we want to attain our goal of mission that the Lord has given us. And so we want to be Christ-centered in our leadership. We believe kind of following the structure of kind of a prophet, priest, king. We know our high strength in these areas. Man, like what if we align fully around that to best meet our mission? That's our goal. Um, but as a believer, as in Christ, that man, that we're Christ-centered, being becoming more Christ-like, and that's our approach to spiritual growth, and that we'll, we'll grow more in that way. So we're going to jump into our passage. I'm going to read it. We're going to be in Hebrews 4, starting in verse 14. I'm going to read it for us, and then I will pray for us. Uh, but our hope, my hope today is that we will see Jesus as, we'll read the text, as our great high priest, and how he was an example of a priest, but then how he calls us as priests, and how we're to walk out that example in our lives, okay? So let me read Hebrews 4, verse 14, and then we'll get going. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession, for we do not have a priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin." Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. For every high priest chosen from among men is appointed to act on behalf of men in relation to God, to offer gifts and sacrifice sins. He can deal gently with the ignorant and wayward since he himself is beset with weakness. Because of this, he is obligated to offer sacrifice for his own sins just as he does for those of the people. Let's pray. God, we love you, and God, we thank you for being good, uh, Lord, being loving and caring about grace and mercy. We thank you for your truths, Lord, your promises. We thank you for the word of God that is, that is true yesterday, today, and forever. Lord, we thank you for, Lord, just the, the, the methods you put in place for us to know you, Lord, the disciplines in place to, to know you more and to follow you more. Lord, I pray that as we talk today and we look in your word, Holy Spirit, that you would just speak. Speak through me. You speak through the word, Lord, that you just speak in the hearts of us all here today, that we may know you more. God, that you would be bigger and more magnified in our lives and in our view of you. So in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus is our great high priest. Unless you've done a lot of study in the Old Testament, that may mean different things to you. What is a high priest? What is a priest? Uh, let me read the text here, and then we'll look at priests a little bit. Hebrews 4 again says, Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. Let us hold fast to our faith. He is our high priest. Earlier in Hebrews chapter 2, I'll just read it here. It's up on your screen, I think. It says, therefore, he had to be made like his brothers in every respect so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God to make propitiation for the sins of the people. For because he himself has suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. Jesus is our great high priest. Anytime I get to preach, if I can work in the word propitiation, feel like I'm doing good. So I'll tr that's good. That's why we had that one in here. Uh, propitiation means uh, as, he, as high priest, he made a sacrifice that was the ultimate sacrifice. It was a wrath-absorbing sacrifice. He took the wrath upon himself that was due us because of our sin. So he made propitiation or that kind of sacrifice for the sins of the people. That's talk, talking about Jesus. But Jesus represented the whole world before God, and he offered himself as a one-time sacrifice. This priest idea, the high priest, um, let, me, let me just look at that a little bit. We don't have time to go really deep and long in that, but I do want to give a little picture of what was the priest, what was that role like. I mean, there was a set of people, a tribe that was set aside to be the priest in the Old Testament and for the Israel. Um, there was all kinds of uh, religious, liturgical rules and different things for the priest role. We're not going to dive into all of it, but uh, who is an Old Testament priest? They offered sacrifices. 
So for the people, before God, they, they, went, they went to God on the behalf of the people. And they had to offer sacrifices, and particularly sacrifices for the sins of the people, uh, which only one person could do one time a year. And that was the high priest. The high priest was one guy who was not perfect. He had sin, and he, was, he had to offer sacrifices for himself. And then it's like all these different thing rules. Then he could enter into the, not just the temple and tabernacle, but into the Holy of Holies, the most inner place where the presence of God was, to offer sacrifices for the sins of the people of Israel one time a year. That's how they got right with God, if you will. The Old Testament, it was a harsh law that no one could really live up to. And the best thing they could do was follow the, what the Lord had given them, which was this system. But that was the high priest, and the role of the high priest was to do that on behalf of the people. So he's a mediator between God and the people. This next slide talks about Jesus, the high priest, and the Old Testament priest. So they're both appointed by God. But if you see Jesus, he was truly the son of God. The Old Testament high priest was human. Jesus serves forever. The Old Testament high priest served just a life term or less. Jesus was perfect and sinless. The Old Testament high priest was sinful. Jesus was a one-time sacrifice. The Old Testament high priest had to, there was more sacrifices regularly as well as just the annual atonement of sin sacrifice that had to happen. Like the 10th day of the 7th month, it was like this one-time thing and hopefully it was good and the, holy, the high priest was in, in the right with God going in. It was very uh, structured and systematic but it was only temporary as well. God's, Jesus as a high priest died on the cross as a sacrificial lamb sacrifice, which was permanent once and for all. Jesus ushered in a new covenant as well. The old covenant was out of the old system, the sacrificial system. Jesus, the high priest, went before God, offered sacrifices, which was himself. It's done and over. Didn't have to come back next year. The next year, it was done forever. Amen? That's great. I'm thankful for that. Um, but that's Jesus. Jesus was our great high priest. I'm thankful we're not under the old system. I'm thankful we're on the other side of Christ, the Messiah who has come. Hebrews 5.1 says, For every high priest chosen... This is speaking of the Old Testament high priest, not Christ. For every high priest chosen from among men is appointed to act on behalf of men in relation to God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. Again, that's their role. I'm... Jesus did that for us, though. He went on our behalf before God to sacrifice himself for the sins. Just like some of the nothing but the blood of Jesus, right? We sing these songs. It's like, man, these, these are deep, meaningful songs that we sing. That's seeing Jesus for who he is and what he's done for us. 1 Timothy 2, 5 says, For there is one God and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. So he went to God on our behalf. He is the mediator between God and man. So I want us just to see that, that Jesus, when we, say, when we say in Hebrews 4.14, oh, Jesus is our great high priest, that's what it's talking about, is that he came and offered a sacrifice, but it wasn't a lamb or another lamb. It was he, that's why they call him the lamb, because he was sacrificed, his blood was shed for our sins once and done. Okay, Jesus, our great high priest. He also is our priestly example. Okay, so if we're trying to look at this, okay, what does this mean for me? Well, let's look at well, how, what was the example of Christ being uh, like a priest, if you will. So Hebrews 4, verse 15 and 16, I think this is a really great one to unpack a little bit for us. So it says, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. So number one, he... He's a priest who can sympathize with us, which is important because we're going through all kinds of who know what sitting out here represented in chairs and on this stage in real life stuff, but he can sympathize with us. And he also says he understands our weaknesses and that's, that's real. We're not putting on a, a fake show for, for God and Christ. Like he knows who we are in our rawest of raw and still died on the cross for us. He knows us in our weaknesses. It also says he knows temptations. It says, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. There's not a person in here that's not tempted and hasn't sinned. He knows that what it's like to be tempted. He's, he can relate to that. He knows temptation. It goes on to say, 
But let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Man, Christ in his priest-like role, man, he gives mercy and he shows grace and he helps in the time of need. So we're trying to build out like a resume. Okay, what does this priest-like role look like? It's someone who can sympathize with others and understand weaknesses, okay? It's somebody who understands being tempted. It's someone who gives mercy and shows grace and helps in the time of need. And you may say, oh, well, that's fine, Kai, but I'm the, I'm the prophet guy. Remember, I like truth, and I want to dive into the Word, and I want to know God's Word, and I want to know it more, and know it more, and know it more. And people are just, Ugh, I just want to know God's Word, and He's good, and I don't want to deal. Like, no, like, we don't have an option. Even if you're not a high priest, you're not, a, no one's a high priest. If you're not priest-like in your giftings and your natural tendencies that God's made you, we still have the call to be about people and loving of people and to sympathize with them and to understand weaknesses and to show mercy and grace, okay? Does that make sense? So that's, this is his example that we, that they're, he's describing here in Hebrews of Christ. Also in 2 Corinthians, it says, all this is from God who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. And God reconciled us to God. That, that was a, an example of his priest-like work was bringing these two together. Through his work on the cross. Matthew 9, 36. These next couple verses, again, trying to, trying to paint the picture of the priest role of Christ. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And I, I love that verse. It's easy, you know, Jesus did come and he said, the kingdom is here and now. Like, repent of your sins and be baptized. Like, he he did come in truth and proclaim, like, follow me. But it also says he had compassion and he saw people, right? And so I think it's important for us to see God both ways, fully. Mark 8, 2, I have compassion on the crowd because they have been with me now three days and have nothing to eat. I love seeing his example of compassion there. Romans eight thirty four. Another example of Christ and, and a role that he plays for us as a priest. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised. Who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. So not only did he go to God on our behalf and die on the cross for our sins, he is continually and repeatedly and ongoing forever interceding or praying for the believers on our behalf. Like that's part of that priestly role that he is in. So Jesus Christ is our high priest, and we see some examples of kind of what that's like. What is he, how does he fulfill that? Well, he also appoints us as priests. Not a high priest. We don't need those anymore, thankfully, right? We don't need it. We don't have to do that. But he does appoint us as priests, and so let's look at that, who we're called to be, and then we'll look at what that looks like. Revelations uh, chapter 1, and there's another one in chapter 5 we'll look at. But Romans 1 says, To him who loves us, speaking of Christ, and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And he's speaking about us, this kingdom of priests. Re- Revelations 5, 9 and 10 And they sang a new song saying, again, speaking kind of to and about Christ, worthy are you to take the scroll and open its seals for you were slain and by your blood, you ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom and priests to our God and they shall reign on the earth. Again, we're called priests like, okay, all right, y'all are all priests. There you go. You have a new role, title. 1 Peter 2, 5. He just spoke about Christ, and now it's referring to the believers. Now you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house 
to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Now, I'm thankful we no longer have to act, offer sacrifices for our sin. Christ did that, is done. But it says here that we're to offer spiritual sacrifices, right? Spiritual sac- sacrifice. It's like Romans 12, 1 and 2. It says that we're to offer our bodies, as our, li- our living bodies up as spiritual sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God. That's the type of sacrifice as a priest now that I do. I give my body, I give my life I'm for Christ okay? and for others so that they can know Christ. That we can be a mediator between God and man like that. 1 Peter 2.9 similarly uh, calls us a priesthood. Um, it says, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And a royal priesthood. I, don't, I didn't grow up thinking myself was like, a, I'm a priest or I'm in a priesthood, you know, like this brotherhood of priests. Like, no, but, but part of being in Christ and if Christ is in you because he fulfills this role, that's part of your that's part of who you are to be. That's part of who Christ is in you. It looks different coming out of you and coming out of you and coming out of you. It looks different because Christ has made you uniquely. But we're to be about these things that Christ was compassionate and he showed grace and mercy and all these things. And he brought people to God and offered their lives as a living sacrifice. So that is our example. And we're called to be like that as priests. So... God's, Jesus is our high priest. We saw his examples. We're now called to be priests. What does that look like for us? How do we live that out? What do we walk that out? What does that do? So we're going to, Jesus calls us to model his priestly example. This is the next part. And he wants us to be like him. And to be like him means we got to be, grow in this area as well. We look at Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10 is a passage I love. Um, Like a couple other passages, certain things are set up, some truths, and then it says, do this kind of things. Uh, This is the one passage that you can get three lettuces with just two cents. That's a dad joke. Y'all can laugh or be annoyed. It's okay. Um, We'll read this and you'll maybe get it or not. Okay, Romans 10, 19 through 25 says, Therefore, brothers, since... We have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain that is through his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day drawing near. I joke about the three lettuces for two cents thing. I don't think anyone really laughs at that. It's just, I think it's funny. Um, But the... But since he is our high priest, and since he's gone before us and his blood was shed, and since he has done that work, he's now calling us as priests. He's saying, let us draw near to him. Let us be in his presence. Let's bring others into his presence. Let us do that. He goes on to say, let us hold fast to the confession. Let us hold fast to our faith. Let us persevere in our faith and our confession of the faith without wavering. And then the thirdly, let us consider how to stir up one another towards love and good works. I mean, that's what, that's the heart of groups that I try to, we want to encourage people to be a part of, be a part of groups. Why? Because we need encouragement. We need stir it up towards one another. There's weeks when we're getting beaten up by the world and the waves of life. And it's like, man, I need to be around others that can speak some encouragement into me and point me back to Jesus because I've drifted. And so... Man, stirring up one another, that's a priestly type role that we're all called to. And being in groups helps us live that out. And be an encouragement to one another, it says. Don't neglect meeting together. It's important that we do together. We all can get into an isolation mode if we're not careful. 
Some of us can get there really quick. Some of us, it takes a little while, but we can still get there. I know people, people that, man, if they had their druthers, they would probably be by themselves 24 hours a day, most days a week, because they just don't like being around people. And I, and, and I get it, and there's moments for that, for sure. Jesus pulled away and got with the Father. But it says we're not to neglect meeting together. It's very important that we do this and that we do groups because we need that from each other. And not only do we need that, I need this from y'all, but we need it, I need it from you, you need it from me kind of thing. So you're like, oh, well, I don't need group. Well, you know what? You do need group, but someone in your group needs you. And so, man, we have a role as a priest kind of role at church and a role as well as in your neighborhoods and everywhere else. Says Romans 10, favorite verse of mine. Uh, let's also look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We looked at it, I think, briefly earlier. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. And, and here it is, entrusting us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God is making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. This is kind of a dual prophet priest thing. It's like proclaiming, like be reconciled. But the priest in us is like, man, like let me bring you to God. <laughs> like let's bring these together. And like that's, God was the ultimate. He reconciled us, did that work on the cross. But I love this picture. Like he's called us to be ministers of reconciliation that's not like minister as in a staff minister or you know like if you're in christ you're a minister of reconciliation you're to be about helping people get reconciled with god which is through pointing them to christ this uh a priest is concerned not only for the conversion and initial reconciliation of the believer to god but also that all our lives be increasingly lived out in the joy and the freedom that the gospel secures and applies to us. Ryan, I shared this that last week, but and it's, it's both. I mean, the, the, the priest nature of Christ and the priest nature within us through Christ is to reconcile and to bring people to God and, and also, man, to live out this freedom of life in Christ. I love this, this other... A word picture, if you will, of what it means to be a priest. And uh, it came across this in my study, and I was like, man, I, that's great. I hadn't really heard that before, but I love it. It's, it's this idea of a bridge builder. And so uh, the Latin word for priest means bridge builder, if you will. Um, get the slide up there. There you go. Um, Jesus was the ultimate bridge builder, right? He bridged the gap for us. Uh, I'm a visual guy, so I don't know if y'all are not, but let's just picture this was a big chasm, and all of us were way up on this wall, up on the cliff, sinners without God. Jesus, or God is over here, holy, perfect, mighty, can't have an ounce of touch of sin. We're full of sin, right? Jesus built the bridge across through his work on the cross as the high priest, offering himself as a sacrifice for our sins, was a bridge builder. He built the bridge. We're to be little bridge builders, we're to help build bridges from people to God. That's how we do that. As a, that's how we operate in that priest role. We do that, hopefully, if you're a parent, you do that with your kids. You desire to. You're continually trying to like lay the bricks of that bridge. Like We want to build that bridge across. Paint the picture of Christ, of God, who he is, the work of Christ on the cross. And that, that one day, our kids would see the complete bridge in Christ that was built and, and accept Christ as their Lord and Savior. We're to be bridge builders as well. Can you be called a bridge builder for God? Again, it's not just, well, can I just read my Bible? Isn't that okay if I just know this? I know all the books of the Bible. I can tell you what his truths are, and I can tell you all the one and others of Scripture. I just don't want to live them out. Well, God calls us to more than that. That's not okay. okay? It's, it's not okay to not love people. You don't have to be great at it. You may have to really work at it. It's just we've got to be about people. He is. I'm thankful for his work on the cross and his life for us. And we have one mission over here. We exist to glorify God. Okay? We exist to glorify God. That's our goal. 
We want God glorified in us as new believers, as new believers come to know Christ, as believers growing, as disciples making disciples through the gospel. That's our mission, is that God be glorified, hopefully Christ being more magnified in our lives. We believe we can do that best as a church when we have unified, balanced leadership, and that's kind of why Prophet, Priest, King, and it fits. I think, man, we'll be able to, man, advance through the kingdom in the best way we believe possible through having unified, balanced leadership, Christ-centered in our leadership. Um, but for believers and us, if you're in Christ, man, being all in as a believer is seeing Christ from all three of these perspectives so that we may grow in Christ-likeness. And that's, that's our heart today. And if you, speaking of bridge builder, as we kind of close, uh, and if you don't know Christ, when I talk about a believer, and if, if you're like, what are you talking about? Um, Christ did his, Christ, Jesus, the Son of God, came, lived 33 years on this earth for the sake of being our ultimate sacrifice so that we can be reconciled to God. If you don't know him as such, as that bridge builder, man, today is an opportunity to know him that way. Any day is that opportunity. You cry out to him and you confess with your mouth that he is Lord. Believe in your heart that he is raised from the dead and you can be saved. We want to talk to you about that, though. If you want to know more about Jesus being the ultimate, the bridge builder, the one who reconciles us to God, please, after service today, come and talk to one of us. We'll have people over here on my right and your left, as well as just people up front. So we'd love to talk to you about that. Amen. Today, it was a joy for me to get to talk about the priestly nature, but man, it's just, I, I, I really would rather to just be down here and us just be talking because I like to be with people and I want to, I want to, I love VBS because we get to be with people and Fall Fest and Egg Scramble when, when we're all gathered to do these things because we just get to hang out and serve the Lord and point people to Christ. And I'm like, man, yes. I, when I came to know Christ, I think I saw Christ mostly as his prophet nature, that's my view of Christ was. I saw the truth. I saw my sin. I needed that. I was like, yes. It finally came into perspective after many years. And I was a teenager. I was like, man, I need the Lord. But as I've grown, as I've, as I've walked life and went through marriage struggles and family issues and hardships of life, like his priestly nature just became bigger and bigger and bigger. And I see his grace and mercy in ways I've never seen before. And I want us to grow in that. And man, as as people, people, I want us to grow in that for the sake of glorifying God and Christ being magnified.